Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metal Nation. Joining us today, the incredible Mike LaPond. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Rustin. You got a lot of stuff going on, as always. The new album, Pawn and Prophecy, coming out on the 26th. Great, great album. Uh, thanks so much, man. Yeah, it was uh, took a few years to write, but I finally got it out, and uh, I'm excited to uh, start the whole process with the new album. Yeah, I, I was. I've been listening to it all morning, and it's to me, it's a nice companion to the debut album, but it's also sort of progression from it as well. And and you mentioned you've been writing it for a while, but I'm guessing there was probably some old riffs you had hanging around that you sort of dug out to this time. Yeah, it was like a combination of both. I did have some old riffs that were laying around that needed to be finished. So when I decided to do a second record, I did that first. You know, all the like just straight ahead heavy metal kind of riffs i fixed them all first and uh updated them a little bit and then uh obviously for that really long 20 minute song that was like a work in process for like the last two years so that really took a long time and i guess that was really that's really what held the album up for four years completing the epic piece at the end huh yeah We'll talk about that one as we go, but uh, so the the new album, obviously, uh, eight tracks, fantastic stuff, as I said. Alan Returns is the voice of the Assassins. How much did the two of you work together on the writing and melodies for the director? Yeah, well, usually the way we do things, it was exactly the same as the uh, first record. You know, I wrote all the music, and then I uh, got the lyrics all together, and what I do is, I mean, not that I can sing, I can't sing really, but I kind of just hum what I hear to Alan. And then, you know, Alan is so good that he kind of knows exactly what I want to hear and, and exactly what I'm trying to do. So he'll just come down and uh, he'll just sing it the way it's supposed to sound. And he'll just, whatever, if if some words feel weird, you know, the consonants or anything feel weird singing, he'll just kind of change that and just make it the way it's supposed to be. When you wrote the debut Silent Assassins record, you sort of tapped everything from your Motorhead influences to even Blackmore's Night. What were some of the influences that stood out most for you on this record? Yeah, I think uh, basically it was along the same lines. You know, a lot of songs are very Judas Priest, very Motorhead for the most part. And I actually have one folk song, which is definitely a homage to Blackmore's Night, but I think the only difference would be, you know, that long song was really a homage to uh, Symphony X, you know, because I was really, I think the albums, both of them together, are basically kind of the same, except for that that long tune. So I would have to, uh, you know, give Symphony X the nod on that one. Well, we've alluded to the, the epic masterpiece on the album, which is the title track that closes it out. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about that one first, then. You, you, had, you had some of the band, Symphony X, on the song. You had a lot of great guests on it. It's my understanding that track's sort of a, almost a heavy metal soundtrack for Shakespeare's Macbeth, correct? Yes. I, uh, I love that play. I, I always thought that was like Shakespeare's darkest play. And, you know, it has witches and ghosts and all this cool stuff going on. And, and I always thought that it would be really cool to have like a metal band do it. So now I had this idea probably since like 2003, and I was trying to get Symphony X to do it for that whole time, you know, but it just kind of never happened. You know, I put the offer out there and then eventually we'd go with a different concept. So um, I finally said to myself, you know what, I'll just do it. So, uh, and it, you know, I didn't realize, you know, the amount of work because when you have a, a 20 minute song, the challenge is, you know, how do you keep the listener's interest for 20 minutes? And that's really a big challenge. So what I did was I made the song go in all these different directions and all these different fields. And I kept some riffs maybe coming back here and there just you know, just so the the listener can say, oh yeah, there's that part again, and then eventually have it have this big epic ending. And also, you know, there's uh, some female witches in there, and uh, and and Macbeth's wife. So there were some female opportunities. So I uh, I hired some females, and I think in the end it all kind of worked out. Um, would I ever do it again? Probably not, because it's a lot of work. <laughs> but uh, 
I had a, I, I'm glad that I did do it. And, and it had, to, to my ear, especially at the beginning anyway, a great Arabian flavor, if you will, which I, I also sort of felt a little bit on the track I Am the Bull. Mm, yes, 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 definitely. Those kind of like scales and that kind of stuff uh, always have influenced me since I've joined Symphony X. So, and I believe as well, you have uh, some Lovecraftian uh, ideas going on, some tributes to a couple of his stories, Hordes of Fire, which you released the other day uh, for people to get a taste of the album. And I think the other one is Avengers of Eden, for sure, which to me sounded sort of like a counterpart almost to Apocalypse Rider from the debut album. Uh, are those both the Lovecraft ones, or are there more? Yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, exactly right. Yeah, as far as H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, I like a lot of his stories. You know, I like short stories. So, you know, him and Edgar Allan Poe, you know, I mean, I love what they do. So sometimes I try to write music to that. So both the singles that were released for this new album uh, are both short stories from H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, Avengers of Eden and Apocalypse Rider, you know, that's definitely my Motorhead exciter influence. So, uh, rest in peace to all those guys in Motorhead. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think you had said uh, Avengers of Eden sort of was like Van Halen's House of Pain on steroids, almost. Yeah, that's actually very true. Uh, you know, the I listened to House of Pain, you know, and I said, wow, that's a cool riff, man, you know? And then I kind of said, well... Let me just try to make it faster and maybe maybe with a few different notes, but with the same kind of idea. And it just kind of started sounding cool. And uh, so I just went with it. And then, uh, you know, before I knew it, I had a, another song. And, and two of my favorites on the album, but uh, I, I love the entire album because right out the gate, you have sort of this Viking vibe going on with Masters of the Hall, but there's also some speed metal feel to it and even some... Uriah Heep ask organ work going on as well. Yeah, you know, uh, with Masters of the Hall, I was like, okay, you know, this is a, it's a metal tune, but the chorus is kind of, sounds like kind of like rock and roll almost, you know? So I said, man, it would be really cool to have like a Hammond B3 organ in there. So uh, that was, that was really fun. And I just, uh, I wrote that song. I remember I was just on a, I was on a plane and, uh, I just started singing this in my head. I don't know, maybe out of boredom or I don't know. <laughs> but um, it came out great. Yeah, Masters of the Hall is definitely one of my, uh, I'd say it's one of the best songs that, you know, for me personally, I, it's one of my favorites. Well, the the entire record is excellent. And as I said, now I'm just really starting to get to listen to it now. And I'm going to, I'm sure, pick up more and more layers as I go. One of my favorites already is Black Legend because it's got that nice chug and rumble. Is there some story behind that one? Yeah, Black Legend, um, that's probably, you know, that's like my Judas Priest influence. I'd say if you remember that Judas Priest song called Delivering the Goods, um, it's kind of modeled after that. And that is like my signature style, just straight ahead classic heavy metal the way i feel you know it should be played and uh lyrically it's kind of a it's about uh, the spanish inquisition so uh you know there's some cool historical references in there and uh but yeah i mean it's, as for me like that one song is definitely nails my signature style and uh, you mentioned you know the title track was it took so long to put together and that's just such a big epic piece but beyond that song, what was the most challenging aspect to making the new one? Mm, yeah, that's a really good question. Besides that, you know, I just kind of followed the formula I did with the first album. You know, if I made any, you know, it's always a learning experience to me, you know, because usually, you know, you have a band and you guys all work together. But this one, this time, it's like all me. So um, any mistakes that I made from the first album as far as like recording or harmonies or anything like that i uh i had much better uh handle on it for this album so it ran really smooth um i think probably you know the the biggest thing maybe besides that song would be the folk song it's called uh, the mulberry tree it's basically kind of like a blackmore's night kind of style song and just trying to figure out what instruments would you know would work for something like that so uh in the end you know i had an an accordion in there <laughs> which sounded cool <laughs> and you know and just some other 
ancient instruments. But in the end, that that was fun too. And uh, Alan did a great job on that too. He, uh, I'm sure he's never done anything like that before, and uh, he 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 just kind of understood the feel and did a great job. It's got great continuity, and I love the way the Mulberry Tree is right before you do do the epic title track at the end. It gives you sort of a palate cleanser from everything else to get you prepared for that. So, and I just realized in talking to you about the the album, we hit on every song I think except Antichrist. So I don't want to leave it alone as this orphan. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about that one. Yeah, the Antichrist. Um, yeah, I've had that main riff. I had that for like many years but I just didn't know what to do with it, you know? So that was one of the songs where the old riff was laying around and I had to, you know, I had to put it together. Yeah, it's kind of, maybe it's kind of in the style of like Merciful Fate and uh, the chorus, I kind of wanted to do maybe an Arabian version of Painkiller Chorus, kind of like that. And so, yeah, that that turned out really cool. The lyrics were about uh, Nero from uh, Roman history. Yeah, and I just kind of tried to make it kind of dark and and as heavy as possible. But yeah, that's 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 definitely one of one of the uh, cooler tunes on the album, I think. So before we get out of here, of course, I'd be remiss if I did not get an update on Symphony X. Any news to report? Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, in 2017, Symphony X did not perform. Michael Romeo uh, was working on you know a solo album, which he's finishing up now. Uh, and Russell, he was doing work with his side man, the Adrenaline Mob, and now he's, uh, he, I think he probably just finished his tour with, uh, the Trans Siberian Orchestra. So basically it's looking like probably sometime next month we're going to, uh, get together and, uh, start writing songs again. And hopefully we'll have something new available either by the end of this year or early next year. And I, I just realized, because I think you joined in like 1999, which makes this year the end of your, your second decade with the band. <laughs> I know. You know, when I look back, it's, I can't believe it. You know, it's so many, uh, just so many incredible memories. And I, I, you know, I can't believe that I actually got to do this for a living. You know, for a while, I was just a struggling musician in the New Jersey uh, rock scene. And I never thought I would, you know, do anything like this and then before you knew it you know somebody knew somebody who knew them and i was auditioning and then i was in the band and then i'm on tour in front of all these people and recording and it's just been uh an amazing experience and something i'll never ever forget well uh, yeah yeah 20 years later almost and of course you keep yourself very busy as we've talked about in the past with uh, your nimble fingers in many other projects who uh, who have you been working with lately? Anything that we should be keeping our eyes and ears out for? Yeah, well, let's see. Last month, I played bass on the uh, the next Ross the Boss album. Right. And uh, so that should be coming out probably by the end of April. Right now, let's see, next month, I'm going to be going in the studio for a band called Them, T-H-E-M. And uh, they're like a really King Diamond style. And um, that, is that going to be a sophomore mm-hmm. record? Yeah, that's their second record. So I'm going to be doing that next month. Awesome, perfect. Mike LaPond, Silent Assassins, the second album coming out on the 26th. Pawn and Prophecy, Symphony X, getting ready to start work on some new music. Them and Ross the Boss and your many other projects. Thanks so much for taking time to talk with us again. It's always an honor, my friend. My pleasure, Rustin. Thank you for having me.